There's no peace when you try to hide your truth And broken people hurt themselves And you, Lord, you know me well You do All my thoughts and all my ways do I can't fake it with you A cup of day, a cup of you A cup of grace, a cup of truth Take my pain, make something beautiful Something you can use Cup of day, a cup of you A cup of grace, a cup of truth Here's my heart, bruised and beautiful Make me more like you. Hey, welcome, 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 welcome to A Cup A Day, the podcast. So if you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast, you might be hearing my voice and wondering, who is this new DJ in town? The new DJ is the singer, the songwriter. Yes, it's me. I am Shireen Anderson. You probably first heard about me as an actor in the movie called Dance Hall Queen. Or maybe it was One Love, a film I did with Kimani Marley and Idris Elba. But for some of you, it's always been about the music. You know me for songs like Good love and have a comeback coming over tonight shine on rebel and so many more for some of you we met while i was on tour with my mentors sly and robbie and i also toured extensively with another band called michael franti and spearhead we had a song a billboard song called say hey i love you then there was the mentorship program we have for children called Rock, Reach One Child. And then your girl got a little bit busy, you know, I wanted to expand into some more business territory. So I stepped into real estate and I started a company called Power Living. This takes me back to right now, today. We're going to have a lot of fun. If you've been following my little motivational videos, you'll understand that a cup a day is to point you to the one person. The one reason for this all, that's Christ. So we're not scripted. I just go and talk. Yeah, me jot down some little points where me kind of feel like me dip on my heart for talk about. And we're just going to jump right into it. So yeah, grab your cup and let's get right into it. Over the holidays, a lot's been riding on my mind. And one of the things I feel like I have been dealing with a lot <laughs> and a lot is this sneaky little nasty little dirty little thing the big p word pride 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 baby pride pride so that's what we're going to talk about today now you know some of you may, may may or may not know um over the last couple of years i've been on a little journey a little journey with god a journey with faith. So people have been asking all these questions. I mean, sure you're not gonna come back with a half a comeback, or sure you're not gonna come back with a good love, or what's this shift? Is she this? Is she that? But I'm here to tell you that you know what? When God gave talent, it was used talent. And right now, everything is to his glory. And pride, I feel like is the best way for us to start this year. So we're gonna jump in at the way there because some may get it and some may go give it. Now I feel like this is so fitting because the scripture that has kind of been going around and round in my head is one from Proverbs and it says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall, right? Now, I started to say, but that, that don't apply to me. Like, I don't think I am prideful. Um, I, I don't think until, you know, God started showing me something because initially, this is how I thought about pride. When you say pride to most people, most people are going to say to you, it means somebody who vain, right? Or somebody who kind of arrogant or kind of stuck on themselves. When we think about it, I know a lot of prideful people. The fact that I wouldn't think I am prideful is pride itself. <laughs> because all of us neatly have something seated in us that kind of unravel us. And, and the reality is, how I came to that conclusion, my attentive son. Are you ready for this? Let me show you what I did. Are you afraid of doing something and looking foolish to other people? Is the answer yes or is the answer no? For me, the answer was yes. 
you start thinking how people knew you in the past and what people knew you for or the accolades or maybe the things that you know people knew you to have and then when you say no god moving you to this other direction to do something slightly different you say yeah but me can't go go, go up on camera and have me hair look anyway and my shoes look anyway and my clothes look anyway or i talk about some stuff that has nothing to do with what people already know me for but then i had to bring myself back to the true reason for everything which is christ I am not created for my own glory. My gifts are not for me. They're really supposed to be serving and helping other people. So the fact that I would worry about if I'm going to look foolish to people and people don't create me, then that kind of really just don't add up. So I said, okay. So maybe if them saying then that is pride, well, maybe me look a bit prideful. I don't know about you. What about you? The, the next thing I learned too is, are you one of those people who feel like Everything you do has to be right, or you can't get nothing wrong yet. And you're not very open to correction. You have this little like, okay, like a little, you know, a little smirk, a little sarcasm, a little bit of cynicism, you know, in, in your approach or probably how you respond to people. Then, baby, maybe, maybe have a little, one little butter of pride. Do you tend to lie to save your reputation? That's pride. That's pride, baby, that's pride. Another one of the things that is on this form, it says, is it easy for you to spot issues or problems that are in other people's lives, but not your own? So is it easy for you to see the problem in your mother, your sister, your father, your wife, your baby mother, your girlfriend, but you can't see the problem in yourself? But you might be saying, why is Sherry laboring over this pride, pride, pride stuff? The Bible over and over from the beginning to the end of the scripture tells you pride comes before destruction. Again, the scripture even say, a heart is spirit before a fall. Now, this is not some podcast that's trying to tell people how to live and what to do and how them should, you know, try to walk this fine line of being so righteous or so holy. But as I tell you now, me depend on a little journey and as me get it, me go give it to you. All right? So we're going to keep diving a little deeper. Part of the challenge I was recognizing with pride and conceit as it is, is that sometimes you don't realize that you are the problem. And 90% of the time you think that somebody else is the issue because you can't even see that there's something that is literally covering your eye. The, the Bible talks about a veil like you can't really see yourself in half of the situations. You always think you're right. You always think it's about you. You always think that the regular everyday people is just not really on your level. That's pride. Challenge is, do you think it's something that you even seen yourself or something that you even probably want to fix? Is it worth fixing? Well, only you can answer that question for yourself. The other thing that came to me in my search was as looking at Psalms 101.5, and it says, Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. And I think that one really spoke to me. Come here, said, why is there... Just, just why is this repeated so many times in the Bible? Why is this so important, if it's not important to God? And then I had to dig deep within myself as a believer in Christ, in that if it's important to God, then it should be important to me. So if I am covered in this thing that I don't even know that I have, that I need to ask God to show me it so that I can clear this up. So we can just go along with business and get this assignment and everything done in the way that God needs me to get the work done. All right? Um, I would be okay defining pride as just arrogance if that's the only thing I saw in the Bible. But I came across something else that made me start thinking a little bit differently. And I threw it out to the community. So I'm going to jump into some of those comments too so we can kind of go through it. My question was, do you think insecurity, shyness, you know, even people who kind of act a little bit, oh, no, 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 I could never do that. I, I, don't, I don't want anybody to, to ever look at me or I, I don't want anybody to... To, to think that I'm this, you know, people who just, again, don't want to look foolish in front of anybody else. Would you say that insecurity is a mask for pride? Well, here's what the community thinks. So on IG, Marcia Marie says, yes, low self-esteem is a form of pride, you know? It falls under self-degradation. 
or self-demotion. You become so self-absorbed in what you think, feel, or what, you know, what was said or done to you. And she said, this breeds fear. Instead, you can learn from God and what God says about who you are in his word through his relationship and finding the purpose he created, called, and equipped you to do. I think she also pointed out Psalm 139, 13 to 14. Now, one of the reasons why I asked you now is, you know, you have so many of us look at celebrities and we see them out there. We see the music and we see the confidence and we see all the things that we think, oh my God, I, I, I love this person's voice and them just bad and she rebel and she bull and she this. And it looks one way. But when you go to the other era of a person's life, could some of this confidence simply be just a mask to hide some other area of the person's life that is not so confident? Do you think that the insecurity or the person who acts so shy is really prideful? Because at the base of it, it's just still people being self-absorbed. They're still kind of valuing your own opinion about, above God's opinion of you. So my thing is not even to the comparison of somebody else or what you see somebody doing in their career or the movements that them trying to make or the accolades and the achievements and the accomplishments that they have, but it's what did God create you for? I always tend to use this example. A bicycle can't look at a car and complain about the speed of the car because the bicycle, although it's a mode of transportation, was not meant or made to do what the car was meant to do. You, you cannot get what I say? You can't look at your life and because you're comparing it, people typically do this. Let's say you go to school with somebody. You graduate. Now you look for your virgin and you say, all right, your virgin have a wife. Your virgin have two kids. Your virgin have a house. Your virgin have a car. Your virgin have all these things. And you start looking to say, hmm, you know, well, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just subconfident. And, or you may even say I'm boastful. You may say I'm hype. But because you say nothing, it don't mean that you're a void of pride. Because at the end of the day, by comparing your life and where you are to him, is also a demonstration that something has seeped in and has creeped into your own life. And that's affecting you. It's affecting how you deal with people. I mean, even if you, let's say, you have children, it's probably even affecting some of the values and the different things that you pass on to your family. Now, I know there, there is a thing where people say, well, you know, so what about taking pride in something. And I think that's a really, really, really valid point. But taking pride in and celebrating something don't mean that your celebration in any way, shape, or form should be something that diminishes somebody else. Because taking pride in God wants you to be excellent. I mean, he gave you these gifts. He gave you these talents. He gave you all of these things so that you could shine because all of it ultimately is to God's glory. We can't choose how are we going to wake up tomorrow? I mean, there are tons of people right now who got up this morning and I didn't know that they'd be on a hospital bed. We're really not in control. And when we understand that everything that we've been given, all the opportunities, all the connections, the favor, everything just the way it lines up is really truly all to the glory of God, then we would understand that if God said he had pride, then pride has to be something where we want to fix. Pride has to be something that we trying to remove and clear from our space as well. Now, as a Christian, and I should tell you guys that I'm a Christian. I don't think we've ever really had this talk in recent years. But yeah, I'm a, a firm believer and follower of Jesus Christ. I meant no, no reservation in saying that. And for me, the Bible is my, that's my truth. It never changed yesterday, it not changed today, and it never will change tomorrow, right? So I can't impose an interpretation on the Bible. The Bible is. <laughs> the Bible is the word. It's the written word of God. And because I believe and I follow Christ, then ultimately what God tells me is what I'm going to follow. There's another thing that people don't look at outside of the insecurity, and then we also looked at people being arrogant, is spiritual pride. So now I'll share an example. I remember when I just came into, I don't want to say just came into faith, but when I just started following Christ again, here is what I recognize. There is a whole assumption about what celebrities will do when they come into the church. For some reason, people think, oh, you have this big platform with all these people who are following you for your music and your film and all of these things. So, ooh, them going to win some souls for God. I'm going to win some souls for God. And while the statement of itself, there isn't an issue really with it, the challenge is, are we 
propping up ourselves on how many souls we win for God. <laughs> you know, there is something a little bit off about that. If we allow God to use us with the talents that he's given us and be obedient to what he tells us to do, point in case, me doing a podcast, because my nature would never be to do this. I would never have these discussions with people on no YouTube or anything. You bought me one away in a parking lot? Yeah, well, good, we're going to have the conversation. Conversations even that we probably don't even really have in church? Yeah, but I might talk about some things we're going to really hear so we can talk about the pride thing. But the truth of the matter is, spiritual pride is a real thing. And it even took me back to the book of Ephesians where Paul deal with them hard. When he started talking about one set of people who were more looking at them tradition and how them worship in the right way, not realizing that the Gentiles, i.e. you and me, us, <laughs> you know, we were still going to get access to this glorious inheritance that Christ died for. It's for all of we. It's not for any special group. It's for all of us. So there is also spiritual pride. You know, people who think I've been serving for longer, so I don't know, I just have some direct line to the Holy Spirit that you don't have because you're a new one. No, 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 no. You need to fast and pray. You need to fast and pray for long. And people are walk around hungry and then try to twist up. <laughs> but they might try to, to feel the Holy Ghost and feel the presence. God is everywhere. The fact that you don't feel him there, you have to ask yourself, what is it that I'm doing to block hearing from God? God is omnipresent. You know what that means? It means him the right so with me, him the right so. Wherever you're watching, if you're watching this from your car, he's there with you. If you're at your house, he's at your house with you. If you're at the hospital, probably somebody give you a phone and you're listening to the sound of my voice right now. I'm right there, so with you too. He is absolutely, absolutely everywhere. So the reality of the matter is we just need to know that if something not right with God and God don't like there's something there, we just need to not like there's something there too. Now, I know all of this may sound like a lot and it may feel like, yo, I can't even digest half of what she's telling me because I am not a believer. I am not into this Jesus, Jesus thing that she's telling me. I am not into this Christ thing where she's telling me. I don't even know if it's not a man write the Bible. I don't even know if the man never, you know, them feelings when them write the Bible and I have to interpret it one way different from how I go interpret it right now. And my thing is, hear what? I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm just here to tell you that God loves you. That's it. You know why? Because we all made in the image and likeness of God. Now, if you choose to believe and go deeper, he makes, you know, he may expose some, some more things to you. But pride is one of them where me not go dance with. Because me not go dance with nothing that ultimately I go cause my fall. Right now, I can say to you without calling names, just look through the news, look at the media, look at the people in your life. Look at all the things that you see around you. Have you ever seen where somebody can be so gifted and talented in one area and they go to the top of them charts, the top of them industry in one way and it take one little bit of ounce of that nasty, dirty, stinking thing. Yeah, we're going to call it that. That unravels them because their character is just off. But the pride may have been master's achievement and doing so good and everything was so wonderful. But we never see that one thing that just unravels the whole thing. But the Bible said, I'll go back, Proverbs 16, 18 said, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. You understand that? So that's my little two cents in it today. I'm not going to stay very long. I love you, I love you, I love you. But here what? God loves you more. And what I want you to do is to pour some love on this world. But hey, I have something a little bit special for you. Because I've been working through this area of pride in my own life, I had to come up with a test <laughs> for even really see if the thing they really are bothering me. And here is what I have. I have a little 10 test form for you. So if you feel like you want to get in this challenge, just click the link in bio and I'll directly email it to you. And then we can talk some more. Now... Throughout this new season, may I do it a little bit differently, you know? I really want to invite you guys as a guest on the show. Yeah, you, your mother, your sister, the baby, your auntie, the cousin, the baby father, yeah. I want you guys to jump in the show notes and tell me why you would want to come join me. Sit right here, so we're going to drink a cup of tea, we're going to talk about where you're at. So if you feel like 
coming on here and having some fun with me. You know, maybe we sing a song or two, you never know. Anything could happen. All I need you to do is just jump in the show notes and fill out that form. And if you're not following the community, I suggest that you do, darling. Because we're on TikTok, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and we're also on YouTube, and everything is at Shireen Anderson. You know, in the true fashion of what I do, I'm a singer at heart. I'm a songwriter at heart. So I can't leave it without bust a little piece of tune. Run the track, Rory. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They don't know you. Them that know you alive. I would have met nothing but I would this year. Drop the pride. Yeah. They don't know my story. They don't know a thing about me. Who are they to judge me? See my glory. They never see my pain. People talk, don't faze me. I am not afraid of words that cannot break or harm me. Watch me rise, no time for haters on my plane. No one can hold me eh, down. Eh. Just watch me win this crown. No one can hold eh, me down. Soar like dove, can nobody hold me down? I got life, I got love, can nobody hold me down? We're not going no more next week. See you on a couple of days. A Cup A Day is a production of Shereen Anderson Publishing Limited. Video recorded by Jason Levy. Assisted by Shaquille Elliott. Produced by Carrie Ann Toms. Audio recording by Orville Rory Baker. Styling and production assistant by Chantal Mendez. Edited by Oak and Acorn Studios. Get exclusives and early access at shereenanderson.com forward slash podcast or look for the link in our show notes.